This season, one of the main themes here on Healing Quest is the concept of nourishing traditions. Mm. Nourishing traditions sounds lovely, and it's fascinating to see modern science catching up with so many time-tested ways to stay healthy. And one of those involves something most of us are probably pretty familiar with, or grew up with, and that's chicken soup. Oh, you bet. I grew up on my grandma Emily's chicken soup, Judy. And you know, cooking poultry, beef, lamb, or fish bones to make healing broth is virtually universal. People do it all over the world. Mm -hmm. And the science underlying these nourishing traditions is now very well established. And I love science. And you know, it turns out that bone broth is something most of us need in our diet more often. So I spent some time with two of my favorite experts to find out more about bone broth and why it's so good for us. Around the world, uh, bone broths, including things like chicken soup, but also lamb soup and fish soup and beef soup, or, or a mix of them, traditionally these are very, very healing. Kayla Daniel is a certified clinical nutritionist, author, and vice president of the Weston A. Price Foundation. Dr. Lindy Woodard is a pediatrician in Mill Valley, California, and a partner in a practice called Pediatric Alternatives, which relies heavily on nutrition as a way to keep their patients healthy. I actually, as part of my medical curriculum for my patients discuss the making of bone broth. We have on our website a recipe for bone broth. Um, it's, it's a very important part of what I feel is uh, healing food. So Lindy and Kayla know a lot about this nourishing tradition known as bone broth. The basic ingredients are pretty simple. It's good water, good filtered clean water, and bones, and a little wine or vinegar or lemon, something that will help pull all the good minerals, including lots of trace minerals, out of those bones. So in the freezer, I always have a plastic bag that when I, when I clean off the table, I scrape everybody's bones into it. At some point, which happened to be yesterday, I pulled out that big bag, and then I went through the refrigerator and I found a few loose onions and carrots and this and that. And I put everything into my stock pot. So I brought it to a boil and then I turned it on low on simmer. And I've been boiling it at this point, it's about, oh, 30 hours. So now that my broth is all boiled, I'm going to be straining it. If we have these nourishing traditional foods every day, we're very likely to have beautiful skin, uh, really good joints, healthy bones. And uh, right now there's so many people who say cannot tolerate any dairy products. Those people really, really, really need to eat bone broth because that's where they're going to get their calcium and their magnesium and the trace minerals. This precious stuff is good for everyone, including people that have seriously injured guts from inflammatory bowel disease or children that have leaky gut syndrome. Almost anyone will tolerate bone broth. Our experts say getting the best quality bones is important. Best of all, they say, are bones from grass-fed, pasture-raised animals. But equally important is the quality of the water being used to make the broth. I have serious concerns about tap water. Now that's going to vary from place to place. What a lot of people do instead is they'll go buy, you know, bottled water, but that's a real landfill problem. Plus the plastic may be giving people BPA problems. And a whole lot of people, what they'll do is they'll spend somewhere around $30 and they'll get one of these little pitcher type things. It's better than nothing, but still um, that's just a starter step. Okay. So a step up from that little pitcher system is, is something like what we've got here. And this is also gravity fed. You're gonna pour the water into the top, into here, and guess what we've got in here? We've got some ceramic filters. Now oh look goodness. at those. So do you replace these? So they're gonna have to be replaced um, depending on what your water supply looks like. Um, you know, it could be anywhere from a few months to a year. And so the next option would be something you would put under the counter, something that, say, a plumber would install. Mm -hmm. And there's also some over-counter models of the same type. And uh, the under-counter has the advantage that you're not cluttering up your counter with a lot of stuff, and it's also pretty much, um, you know, you just press this and it's coming out of your faucet. I like that. I like that idea. So filters at this level, they're not going to take out absolutely everything, but they're going to take care of the fluoride problem, some of the bacterial problem. They're probably not going to do things like chloramines, but um, they're going to do a lot. 
Well, Judy, this is the one I really lust after. This is a 14-stage system, so this is pretty much going to take care of anything that's a problem in the water, and it not only removes all the chemicals and the debris and the sediment and the viruses and the mm -hmm. medications, but it's going to uh, energize the water so it has that wonderful freshness and aliveness that you might get from, say, a spring out in the mountains. So if money is no object, this would be what you would recommend? Yes, and when you consider that the money you'd spend on something like this is going to be amortized over a period of years, it's not so expensive. And you know, we really deserve the best. It makes tasty bone broth and good tea and good kombucha and, you know, and just good water to drink. Both Kayla and Lindy recommend the Nourishing Traditions Cookbook for instructions on how to make bone broth. And if you'd like to find healthy bones in your area, we have a link on our website to connect you with local farmers who can help. And if you don't have time to make bone broth yourself, it is available pre-made. Right, and you can often find it from one of those local farmers we just mentioned or from an online source that specializes in grass-fed products. But Brenda, I know how busy you are, and I know you probably don't have time to make bone broth. True. So from my freezer to yours, I just happen to have an extra quart. Oh. So you just have to get the noodles and the chicken and the <laughs> veggies, but uh, it's a good start. Thank you, Judy. I never would have time to make my own bone broth, and I'm feeling healthier already. You're welcome, Brenda. <laughs> and for our, all of our viewers, we have details on those bone broth options, along with information on those water systems we saw at HealingQuest.tv. You know, Judy, bottom line, I now have a whole new level of appreciation mm. for the wisdom of our mothers and our grandmothers. Oh, that's so true.